everyone, thanks for joining me again. This month's conservation interview is about the broad-headed snake. Here I am with Chris, one of the reptile keepers here at Corumban Wildlife Sanctuary. Now, snakes are one of my all-time favourite animals, and I'm sure they are one of yours as well, Chris. So how are snakes misunderstood? Oh, well, snakes, Pat. I misunderstood it's this um, perception that people have that all snakes are bad. Yeah. When, in fact, snakes are really... Um, one of the best pest controls you can have at home. Mm -hmm. So here on the Gold Coast, they say that there's one carpet python in every third roof here on the Gold Coast. Wow. Which is um, really great for those pest species of rats. And they don't cause any drama or damage um, to your roof. And mm -hmm. they're just great to have around. So yeah. if we respect them and understand them, then we should be able to live equally and safely with them. Yeah. It's amazing because 90% of snake bites happen when someone's harassing a snake or picking up a wild snake, which isn't used to people. Well, that's exactly right. And that's what happens when people try and catch or kill a snake is when you're putting yourself in that vulnerable situation to get bitten. Yeah. So it's really important just to leave snakes alone and just yeah. enjoy them in your yard. Yeah. So what should you do if you come across a snake? Well, the best thing to do is if you stumble across a snake, is just to keep still and just let the snake move out of the way in its own time. Yeah. It's best not to poke or prod it with a stick and um, just to leave it, just to leave it. Or if you can, safely step away mm. just in the opposite direction because you know that that snake's going to be more scared of you um, than you are of it. Yeah, absolutely. It's just, to be, just to be safe, it's just to let them do their thing and yeah. just enjoy them from a distance. Yeah, snakes have really blurry vision, so it's like if this big giant came along, it's really blurry. Yeah, that's exactly right. And if you don't have any arms and legs, the only thing you're going to do is bite. So exactly. that's what, how they've got to defend themselves. Yeah. So whereabouts do these guys, broad-headed snakes live? And yeah, where do they live? So the broad-headed snake, it can be found in about 200 to 250 kilometre radius of Sydney down in New South Wales. So they live out there in these sandstone outcrops yeah. and in the woodlands out there. So they're pretty elusive little guys yeah. and they like to spend a lot of time hiding and they're mostly nocturnal and come out at night. Yeah, I can't see him right now. <laughs> yeah, he is hiding. They're pretty good. We very yeah. rarely see him. So how can you identify the broad-headed snake? Well, the broad-headed snake is a small snake mm. and it grows from about 60 to 90 centimetres in length. And they're quite dark, but they have this um, really peculiar broad head for a, a yeah. venomous snake. So they do look a lot like pythons. And unfortunately, they get mistaken for, the, uh, for a baby diamond python, which yeah. is found in the same area. But these guys pack a pretty nasty bite, so it's yeah. really um, just assumed that every snake is venomous, just yeah. to be safe. But yeah, so these guys live around that Sydney area, mm. in these rocky outcrops, and they spend a lot of time um, hiding away, ambushing their prey. So yeah. they won't actively go hunting. They can be known to sit in the one spot for about four weeks, wow. waiting for prey to come to them. Sounds like a perfect life. Yeah, doesn't it? <laughs> So why are these guys so endangered and what are their threats? Well, actually it's us, it's humans that are their biggest threat at the moment. What we're doing is we're taking away their natural habitats. So we're removing all these bush rocks yeah. and sandstones to make our garden looks not our gardens look nicer. Yeah. And that's what's destroying their habitat. Mm. So we're removing their habitat and their prey items. So they're going to be eating little things like geckos and mice and skinks that are all living in these rocky areas. Yeah. And if we remove that, they've got nowhere to go. Mm. So it's really important that in your own home, if you want to have bush lamps, bush gardens and bush rocks in your gardens, just to get clean rocks and let them get yeah. mouldy because people love the aesthetics. They love the real nice, mouldy, old looking rocks in their yeah. gardens. But it's best to let nature take its course mm -hmm. and buy clean rocks and let them grow in your own garden. Yeah. So what is Kurumban Wildlife Sanctuary doing to help save the broad-headed snake? Well, Kurumban, it's all about education and awareness. So we're trying our best to educate people on these snakes and to not get a fear of, yeah. the, of, of snakes in general. So we want to educate and show and demonstrate that snakes aren't that bad after all. They're yeah. really good to have around. Well, I guess the first step to um, saving snakes is changing people's opinion about it. And that's exactly right. And if I can get that through to one person every day while I'm at work, then I feel like I'm doing my job. You are. <laughs> so how can everyday people do to help snakes, especially endangered ones like the broad-headed snake? Well, it is, like I said, just keep your gardens um, natural mm. and don't take things from the bush. Just yeah. have things, buy things from supplies of nurseries and things like that, that um, and provide natural habitats in your yeah. gardens where the snakes can thrive and live. And live. we can coexist quite happily side yeah. by side if we have this nice mutual respect mm. for the animals in our garden. Yeah. So, thank you for talking to me. No, no worries, Pat. Thanks for coming in. It's always good to see you here at Corumban. Thanks. No worries.